Our next topic is licenses. One type of license that you'll often work with indirectly are the library licenses. Part of each institution's tuition dollars goes toward paying for library subscriptions to online resources. In exchange for our money, the vendors license us to access their content within their specified restrictions. One of those restrictions is that libraries are not permitted to allow access to their databases to anyone who is not current faculty, staff, or student of the institution. Sometimes a database's license permits things like embedding an article or image in an online course, or using it in a conference presentation or a publication. Other times those things are forbidden. If you want to know what a particular database license allows and prohibits, ask one of the librarians at your institution. Another kind of license that you'll encounter is the kind that you get when you get permission to use copyrighted materials in one of your publications, in a conference presentation, or in a course when any of the copyright exemptions don't apply. When you have a course pack made up, your students will pay not only for the printing, but also for the copyright permissions, which the print shop will handle. When you have copyrighted material placed on e-reserves, and it's not covered by fair use, the library typically handles copyright licensing or getting permission for those materials. If you want to upload copyrighted material to the LMS and it's not covered by the TEACH Act or fair use, then your institution may have a copyright office that either handles it or helps you do it. In this case, the cost of getting permission may be paid for through the copyright office or through your academic department. It's a good idea to find out how this works at your institution well before you actually need to seek permission. If you have to get permission to use copyrighted materials yourself, it can seem like quite an undertaking. You should make sure that you have plenty of lead time. Several months is ideal. If you're trying to get permission to use textual material that was published fairly recently and in English, then the first place to check is the Copyright Clearance Center. The Copyright Clearance Center is a for-profit corporation that aggregates contact information and boilerplate licenses to use these materials so that you can search for a particular work, select the kind of use that you want, and in many cases just give them your credit card and pay for the license right there. In other cases, the Copyright Clearance Center will put you in touch with the copyright owner and you'll have to negotiate a license yourself. For other kinds of material, you often have to research to find out who the copyright owner is. This can be somewhat challenging for out-of-print materials, music, movies, and TV. Check with your institution's copyright office, or if they don't have one, check with your library for help with this kind of research. Once you have identified the copyright owner, then you need to negotiate a license. Technically, this can be done verbally. However, it's only common sense that you need to get it in writing. It doesn't matter if it's writing on paper or via email. In fact, many copyright owners have an online form through which you solicit a license. If there is no online form for you to fill out, then you will have to send the copyright owner a letter and a proposed license for them to sign and return. You should specify which work you're using, as well as how much of that work, and which parts of that work. Page numbers or timestamps are essential. You should specify what you're using the work for. Mention that it's educational. Name the course and specify the learning objectives that you're tying this work to. Specify for how long this work will be available and how big the potential audience will be. Specify how you're protecting the work from additional copying, such as a classroom with only 20 students in it, or if it's in a course in the LMS, and password protected. All of these things have the potential to make the copyright owner feel more secure in granting you a license, and possibly at a lower cost than they might for non-educational purposes or for an unrestricted audience. If you do need to seek copyright permission yourself, I've created the Getting Permission Subject Guide with instructions for how to identify and locate the copyright owner of the work that you want to use and also a sample letter and license for you to work off of. Here's what it looks like. Getting permission to use copyrighted materials is not always cheap. 
For permission to use published articles and books for the non-fictional market, expect to pay about 35 cents per page per student. That can add up quickly. Permission to use big media content, such as movies, TV, and music, can be prohibitively expensive, and sometimes they just won't grant you permission at all. Things that are produced for the educational market specifically, like textbooks, workbooks, and educational films, also tend to be very expensive. And if you're trying to license them instead of purchasing them through the conventional means, they may not allow it because they want you to use the market that they've already established. Finally, permission to use unpublished web materials can be tricky. Sometimes it's granted for free or very cheap because it's educational. Other times you can't even contact the copyright owner, and so you can't obtain permission at all.